Hi, this is Mark with QuixVenture.com, and in this video we're going to be covering the process to create a MySQL database for use with XBMC. Specifically, we're going to log into phpMyAdmin and create a user, and then configure XBMC to use the MySQL database. To start phpMyAdmin, if you followed the first process of this tutorial, you'll already have the PHP my admin icon. If you don't have that yet, uh, go back to quicksventure.com and check out the first part of this tutorial. Click on the PHP my admin link to take you to PHP my admin. You're probably going to get presented with a login prompt. The default login is root with no password. Uh, if you've changed it, then obviously you'll have to use something else. All we have to do in PHP my admin is set up a user. XBMC is going to take care of the rest. It's going to create the databases for us and do everything else we need. So at the very top, select Privileges, and select the Add New User option. I'm just going to make it real easy and fill out everything with XBMC. So user ID is XBMC, password, again, XBMC, and retype XBMC. And then grant all privileges on wildcard name, and then check all in the global privileges. Chances are you don't need all of these, but uh, since my database is only going to be used for XBMC, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything. Click on Go down at the bottom, and that's it. You now have a user with the privileges to create new databases named XBMC. So now you need to tell XBMC how to use the MySQL database. If you're using Windows, it's very simple. You simply go to the roaming profile, which is under your users folder, which is C users, and then the name of the person logged in, in my case it's Mark, then app data, which is a hidden folder, so make sure that you are showing hidden files, roaming, XBMC, and then the user data folder. In that folder, you're going to need to create a file called advancedsettings.xml. That file needs to be populated with the following information. It's an XML file, so it's a series of tags that open and tags that close. Start with advanced settings and then video database. You'll need to create a type, which is MySQL, host the IP address of your uh, MySQL database. The default port is 3306. Your user is the username you created, XBMC, password, XBMC, and uh, give it a name, XBMC underscore video. The name is not completely necessary. Uh, I prefer it because I like to have just one more uh, one more bit of control over the naming conventions inside of MySQL. Do exactly the same thing for music database except change the last bit to xbmc underscore music. Finally, you're going to need to create something called a path substitution. XBMC stores all of its thumbnails in the local machine that's running XBMC. In this case it's a Windows computer so in the same place as the advanced settings is going to go there is a thumbnails folder which will be filled up with all the thumbnails that are used all throughout the GUI inside of XBMC. We want to tell Windows or if you're using an Apple TV or some other device we want to tell that installation of XBMC to use a shared set of thumbnails that are going to sit out on a NAS somewhere. In my case, again, I'm using a Synology NAS, so what I've done is to create a source, or rather a shared folder, that is called Thumbs. So go into your Synology and make sure that you have a source that is named something like Thumbs, Thumbnails, XBMC, whatever you want. Understanding that XBMC is going to populate that folder with a whole bunch of folders and files. So you want a source or a folder that is dedicated to Thumbnails for XBMC. The format in advanced settings is to create a path substitution open tag and a substitute open tag. Then from, and this is always going to be the same, special colon slash slash master profile slash thumbnails. And all that means is the C colon backslash program files, or rather users, app data, all that stuff, and the, the default thumbnails folder for XBMC. And then we're going to map that to using the SMB protocol, the name of your shared folder, and then or rather the name of your shared computer or NAS and then the name of the shared folder. I use SMB because it's a whole lot easier. You certainly can use NFS or AFP or any of the other protocols that are supported, 
Uh, in many cases, people use NFS because it is uh, a little bit faster. There's less overhead. But in my case, SMB is a whole lot easier to use because you never run into any of the file sharing permission problems. I have used NFS all over the place and found it to be more trouble than it's worth because some of my Windows machines or my Apple machines uh, set the permissions differently and one device can read them and another device cannot. Once you've got all of this information in there and you can find a sample XML file at quicksventure.com, save the file and put it into the app data roaming XBMC user data folder. Also, all of the sources that you set up inside of XBMC are going to have the same format, and you want the same sources on every single device that uses your MySQL database. That way, you're guaranteed that every device will be looking in the same place for all of its material. One of the keys here is to always make sure that each of your devices uses the same protocol. I use SMB everywhere for the same reasons that I was talking about NFS with thumbnails. SMB, if it works for you, is a great protocol. It's very easy, works very well with Windows and all of your Apple TVs and other devices. If you prefer NFS, it'll work just fine. The formatting is a little bit different, the syntax rather. But uh, for, this, for this tutorial, we're going to focus on SMB. In my case, uh, I have two sources, TV shows and movies, for this demonstration. Uh, and they both point to the MediaNAS2 Synology server and then a shared folder. And then underneath that shared folder are the actual uh, TV show or movie folders. And I take this uh, sources.xml and put it on all of the Windows machines, Apple TVs, or Linux boxes that are using the same shared MySQL database. So take your sources and add it to the same place as advanced settings. And then you can run XBMC. The first time you start it up, it's going to take a little while because it has to go and create all the various database tables. I'm running Eden Beta 3 right now, but this is going to be exactly the same uh, going forward when Eden gets out of beta. Once you've got XBMC open, under Videos, you're just going to have files because nothing has been set yet. So I have the two sources that I set up with my sources at XML, and I need to set their content. Movies, of course, is going to be Movies. I'll go ahead and run a scan now. And TV shows would be TV shows. And I've just got a couple of dummy files in there with some file names so that the scraper will actually come up with something. Uh, just a couple of old movie names that I know are easy to uh, easy to find on the various scrapers. If we go back to the MySQL, we'll see that new databases have been created. XBMC underscore music 18 and XBMC video 60. The XBMC underscore video and underscore music represent the name that we created in the advanced settings folder or uh, file. And the number afterward is the version of the database tables. So if we were to use, say, Eden Beta 2, it would only have a video database version of 58 or 59. But once you go to Eden Beta 3, the version up to 60. So this way, if you have different versions of the database or different versions of the application using the same database, they will only increment uh, the if you have one that's using, say, 59 and one that's using 60, both databases will exist on the MySQL database. However, updates will only happen to whichever one the device happens to be using. So if you have one computer using beta 2 and one computer using beta 3, they're going to update to the same MySQL database, but they're going to use different databases until both are running the same version of the database. And just to make it more complicated, each version of XBMC doesn't necessarily increment the version number of the database. But in general, you want to run the same version of XBMC on every device that shares a database. And if you upgrade one, you want to upgrade all of them. And just be careful that there's not a database upgrade uh, that you can't upgrade all of your XBMC devices to. If we go back to XBMC, it's done scraping, and I'm going to add TV shows. Again, just a couple of dummy files, a couple of uh, shows that I know will scrape nicely, go very quickly. If we look in movies, you can see that I now have uh, 
thumbnails generated and they're now all sitting out in the thumbnails folder on my Synology NAS. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, there are different configurations for each type of device, or rather the process to create that uh, advanced settings file is a little bit different from device to device. The content of the file is going to be the same whether using an Apple TV first generation, second generation, or a Windows box or Linux box. But uh, the place that it's located are a little bit different. So check on quicksventure.com for more instructions on how to do this on an Apple TV, uh, first or second generation. Otherwise, thanks for watching.